What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the West Bromwich Albion career mode. Now, let me say this. First of all, I know I said something like this relatively often, but right now I have quite a few episodes recorded and ready to commentate. I'm going to commentate over all, well, I'm going to try and commentate over all of them today, right now. So, we could be back to daily uploads for this week and for the next couple weeks at least. And I'm going to try and keep it up for as long as possible. But right now we're heading towards the end of the season and we've got Olympic Lyonnais in the Champions League. It's the second leg. We are in France. We won the first leg 2-0 at the Hawthorne. So really we got the job done at home. All we need to do is get the job done away from home and we're through in the Champions League. I mean, that's common sense. If we can get ourselves an away goal, we're looking pretty strong in this fixture. And Leon got off to a pretty strong start. We played a relatively, I wouldn't say a weak squad. We still got some really good players. You see Chadley getting a shot off on goal and hitting the post. Leco from a really tight angle trying to put it back in on goal. But like I said, it's, we, we've, we're not going all out with the ladder. Because as you guys have seen, we haven't been on the best form in the league. We are losing ground over... The, the, the second place team in the champion in the Premier League, which is obviously Chelsea. So we need to keep up winning. We need to have the strongest side out there. And I feel like if the in our in my team, if there's even one important player missing, I feel like like almost everything goes downhill. Like well not everything goes downhill, but I can really see the difference. Like if I'm missing Sturridge, I can really see the difference. If I'm missing Martial, which I have been for a while, I can see the difference. If I'm missing Bezic, if it's a defender then I can really see the difference. So I really want to have the strongest side possible for these Premier League games. And we did manage to put away our penalty, which we got here, which gave us our away goal, which in my mind was pretty much... It pretty much gave us the game. We're 3-0 up on aggregate with an away goal, but Leon did come straight back down the other side. Cross it in. It's hit Jack Rose in the chest. It's fallen to Tolisso. It's volleyed off the crossbar and bounces off the goal line and ends up in the back of the net. So... Excuse me, like, I mean, what kind of goal is that to concede, man? Like, they've booted it all the way up the field from, like, left back up to right mid. Volleyed across the goal, as a cross. Bounces off my keeper's chest, falls straight to Talisa. And he absolutely hammers the volley, which goes off the crossbar and somehow manages to cross the line at the same time. So, I don't know, what can you really do? We're 3-1 up still at this point. Give the ball away to Tolisso. His shot is blocked. It falls to Tolisso again. His shot is saved by the keeper. And it manages to squirm in. So at this point, it's 3-2 on aggregate. But we still do have an away goal. So Leon still need two more goals to get through into the next leg. But I, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm still pretty confident. I'm still pretty confident because conceding four goals, it doesn't really happen all too often for me. And at this point, we're already into the second half. 60 minutes in, only 30 minutes to play. Leco gets across in, back post. It goes to Kyle Edwards who got himself a rare start in this Champions League game, and he nods it in off of the post. That's two away goals. That is game done. Leon will need three goals to get themselves through in this game. Obviously, with an away goal ruling, two goals down on aggregate, they need three to go through. I mean, it's, it's not happening. They ain't scoring no five goals against me. So, we're pretty confident. 79 minutes in this game. Ikemonain off the bench, whips it in, and look at the... Look at... Um, look at... Oh, we've been getting a lot of handball penalties recently, and it what the, what kind of what defending was that? What what where what part of the manual did you read that in? I don't know what that was, but Ortiz Ramos stepped up off the bench to take the penalty and absolutely lashed it into the top corner. I'm a boss when it comes to taking penalties in this game. I love the new penalty system. I absolutely love it. I feel like you could take any type of penalty you want on this game. You uh, look. You could, if you want to, you could just Jamie Vardy it. Just run up to it, full speed, and just smash it home. I love it. I love the new penalty system. But we did go through, obviously, as you could probably expect. You see, Bradley, Michael Bradley, getting a rare appearance this season. Chadley getting a start. So we were pretty confident going into the game. We had a little tiny scare, but we did manage to come out of it with what we expected: a, a win and going through. Into the next round of the Champions League. Our second game of the episode. Not a Premier League game again. We've got another FA Cup match. We're into the semi-final now. The semi-final because I did skip. 
at what I can't remember if I simulated or I played it without recording it. We had a game against West Ham. I can't even remember right now at this point what happened. I think I had the first leg in the video. I feel like I had the first leg in the video and we drew it. So we had a replay and then the second leg I either simulated or I just played it off camera. So we're into the semi-final now against Chelsea. And you can see they have a pretty strong side. Players like Gerard Delafeu. They got players like Icardi in the lineup. So they got a strong side. But then you look at the lineup I'm putting out. And again, it's pretty much my strongest team I could put out. We have a strong side too. Van Dijk, Van Meer, Leko, Sturridge. They're all in it. Christensen. So we're, look at the strong unit with the team talk right there. But it didn't matter at all. Because Gerard Delafeu stepped up, pounced on the loose ball. And fired it into the back of the net from range. From outside the box. Putting it away. Brilliant goal score from the Spaniard. And this guy at this point in his career mode. I'm pretty sure he is a beast when it comes to his stats. So I'm not surprised whatsoever that this guy put it away. And again we've given away a goal. By giving away the ball. Playing around with it in a position we shouldn't have been playing around with it. And Delefeu absolutely punished us. With a strike from range into that top corner. Delefeu getting a second goal in the FA Cup. This season and Chelsea continue to put some pressure on us coming down this left hand side Icardi getting the ball he's playing it inside into Hazard look at the first touch football and just like that eight minutes into the game we go 2-0 down and we have to fight back from 2-0 down now if we want to go through into the final of the FA Cup which I 100% want to do it's a mix of poor defending and them just absolutely just being le legendary difficult. The way they've passed through me right there. We had Gazaniga in goal. That was one of the only changes we made for the game. And I mean, I mean, can you blame him? I don't know. Beating at the near post. I'm not 100% sure if you could blame him. But we did have a chance right there as Kimmich's shot was saved by the keeper. And the subsequent shot from Munaim was eventually blocked. We did get another chance as we played it into Jonathan Lecco. 57 minutes gone at this point. We really need to start playing Getting some chances, scoring a goal. Karsdorp gets the ball outside the box, lets it fly. And his shot is parried wide by Thibaut Courtois. But we really need to start getting back into this game. 71 minutes in, Vandermeer whips it into the box. It's up in the air and we get ourselves a route back in. Like I said, we've been getting a lot of handball penalties. And we get another one as Azpilicueta handles the ball in the area. And Daniel Sturridge is the man who's going to step up and try and get ourselves back into this game. And he does that brilliantly, tucking it away into the far corner. And Courtois didn't move at all. Daniel Sturridge, they wouldn't let me pick the ball up because that just don't work on this game. I speak about it all the time. Such a simple, such a simple feature of the game. Let me pick the ball up. You should be able to pick the ball up whenever you want. But it seems like they only let you do it at certain times. Like maybe when there's less than 10 minutes remaining. I don't know the factoids. But yeah, they didn't let you do it. 77 minutes in now. Jankovic comes on off the bench. He's holding off his man. Gets some space on the edge of the box. And Nino Jankovic steps up. And does the job. Go from 2-0 down against Chelsea in under 10 minutes. We have salvaged something out of this game. Given ourselves an opportunity to get back into it. Nino Jankovic with an absolutely beautiful curler. Peach of a shot. In off the post. Thibaut Courtois wasn't getting anywhere near it. And Nino Jankovic is the hero of the day. He's the hero. Steps up. Does that. Absolutely beautiful strike. And it's 2-2. 81 minutes in. We get a chance to get ourselves back into it. Falls to Manayin. He gets there before Courtois. And his shot ricochets off of the post. And is eventually cleared. We're now into added time. 91 minutes in the game. Daniel Sturridge slides it through to Nino Jankovic. For some reason, Chelsea have pushed so many players up. Nino Jankovic straight through the middle. Keeps going. And Nino Jankovic in added time is the hero of the semi-final of the FA Cup against Chelsea. We've come from 2-0 down in this game. And Nino Jankovic has... Saved us just bursting through the middle no defender could get close to him really and the finish Courtois couldn't get his legs on it and kick it away Fires it into the bottom corner keeps it low Nino Jankovic off the bench Scoring two goals getting us in the lead of this FA Cup Semi-final coming from two goals down. We're just we're just putting in work and Chelsea We need to make sure that we hold on to this because Chelsea Getting in behind right there. Dele De Feu should have put that into the back of the net. And this time, it's Oscar, I believe, getting that header into the hands of Gazaniga. But we come forward one more time. And look at Jankovic. Look at... He, look, they just can't get him off the ball. Nino Jankovic is on fire. In behind for a hat-trick. And Courtois just about doing enough to push that wide. But saving that shot wasn't enough to get Chelsea through. Or at least get them to penalties. 
so they could keep their FA Cup dream alive or at least attempt to. We came from 2-0 down to beat Chelsea and this is the man who stepped up and made it happen. Nino Jankovic coming off of the bench. This young man is fire. Straight fire. I love this guy. And we're training him, continue to train him as a reward of his excellent service. This season he's really stepped up. Towards the end of the season he burst onto the scene. Similar to Van der Meer. Just stepped up, putting in work. And I can, let me tell you guys, we're getting an offer from Real Madrid right here. And I'm going to let you, let me, let me tell you guys, let's get serious for a second. I am considering taking a job because we, I've been getting a few jobs. You'll see in the next few episodes, I've been getting a few job offers. There are a few jobs around. I'm considering making this the last season at West Brom. Regardless if we win the FA, um, win the Champions League or not. Regardless of if we win the Premier League or not. I'm considering leaving West Brom. I feel like it's time. For a new challenge to keep it fresh stuff like that i know you guys some of you guys aren't going to be happy about it some of you guys are only watching because it's a west brom career mode probably but i'm considering it. i feel like it might be time so we'll see how it goes i'll let you guys know over the next few episodes but i'm just saying i feel like it might be time to leave but we're getting into this for now we need to continue to focus on leicester city who are our main concern leicester city Oh, oh, our main problem right now. But you see Mendy getting in the box right there. Poor defending again. And somehow they wasn't given a penalty for that one right there. This time Leco coming down the right hand side. He's got Deli Ali bursting down the middle. And Leicester City are punished. Well, kind of punished. I mean, they could feel a little bit hard done by coming down one end. Should have got a penalty. We come straight down the other end. And Deli Ali puts the ball into the back of the net. And we go 1 0 up in this game. A desperately important match in this series like we've been dropping points left right and center we need to continue and well get some wins we need to change it sorry not continue we need to change it up and get some wins and keep the gap like comfortable we can't have Chelsea closing it down to one point two points we need to keep the gap comfortable and win the league with a few games to spare we don't want to be taking it to the, to the final day of the season especially how we started the season we don't want that man we don't want none of that so Getting off to a good start against Leicester. Little bit of deflection on that header. Taken out for another corner. This time we put it back in. And Virgil van Dijk's header is saved by Kasper Smeichel right there. 32 minutes in. Leicester coming down. Christensen tackles. is tripped up a little bit. And tackled by Amati. Down the right hand side. Le Chef slides over. It's pulled back to Correa. And Correa pulls Leicester back into this game. To be honest. I'm a little bit. I'm, not, I'm a little bit surprised that Leicester still even have Angel Correa. Like, like I said. Four. Four. Years into this series, four seasons in, Correa must be an absolute beast by now. Like, what? How? How's he playing at Leicester? I'm impressed by Leicester's team though, which is why I'm not surprised they were able to put themselves back into this game. But we need to change that and put ourselves back into the lead. Ortiz Ramos going outside the defender, almost squeezes it past Cash. Well, does squeeze it past Cash Michael, but it didn't have enough on it to go over the line. 64 minutes in, terrible defending again, as somehow. We can see another FIFA style goal. I don't know how. First of all, I don't know why the defender controlled it in the box, chest it down. I don't know what FIFA and EA have against first time clearances and shit like that. But I don't know why Kimmich controlled it at the near post. And then I don't know how Amati managed to get it through three players when they were so closely marking him. But Mendy this time on the ball tried to tackle him. Again, it stays with Mendy. Glacier gets blocked off from getting anywhere near him and Mendy fires it into the back of the net and Leicester go two goals up against West Brom at the Hawthorns. We are capitulating at the moment. Another FIFA style goal conceded. We try and tackle Mendy, it bounces off a couple, Kimmich flies away. We try to close down Mendy, Lecher bounces off a Slimani, falls away and Mendy puts it into the back of the net and we lose again, dropping more points. Against Leicester City, the Christian, no, I said the Christian, the captain Christian is not happy. I'm not happy. The players shouldn't be happy with their performances. You can see right here we get another management offer. Paris Saint Germain apparently, apparently, I can even confirm or deny, apparently approaching me for a job and another injury as well to the troubles. The world's just piling on for West Brom and the fans and me. Virgil van Dijk will be out. Till the end of the season. Might even miss the European Championships with Netherlands now that I'm thinking about it. But 
four point gap is what's important at the end of this episode. They are closing in on us. We need to start picking up points. Peace.